Hey everyone, this is Helena Hart, and I'm so excited to be doing a live stream with Bex Burton today. Bex is a dream builder and love coach who helps driven, ambitious women attract and maintain outrageous, lasting love, and I hope I said that correctly. <laughs> awesome. Welcome, Bex. Thank you so much. I'm really excited for this topic today. Yeah, thank you so much, Helena, for having me, and hello, audience. Welcome. Thanks for being here. I'm just double checking to make sure everything's working um, and it looks like we're good. So if you guys, if anything happens with the audio or video, just let us know in the chat and any questions you guys have around this topic. This is actually a super important topic. It's something I hear about all the time, you know, from women and that is what to do if you are feeling attached to a man who you sense might be emotionally unavailable or you keep attracting men who are unavailable in some way, emotionally or otherwise and you're feeling frustrated or discouraged because what you really want is to attract that emotionally available, high quality man who's ready for a committed relationship. So Bex, I'm really excited and fired up about this topic. Let's just jump right in. What are some of the common like struggles or challenges you see with women who, who seem to be attracting or feeling attached to an emotionally unavailable man? Oh, sure. Some of the, the common struggles that, that uh, come out of this emotionally detached kind of relating um, would be uh, women craving more intimacy, more connection in their relationship, um, more communication, more involvement in a man's world. Um, and if it's a woman who's consistently attracting unavailable men, then um, you know, she's attracting these types of men and, and desiring this kind of intimacy and connection. Um, repeatedly not getting it, feeling like she's giving more than her partner, feeling like she's putting out more effort than her partner. Um, I mean, those are some of the ways that it shows up, feeling like, um, yeah, feeling like you're not really ever getting to know a man, feeling like um, he's got like a whole life that doesn't include you. That's another way that it shows up. Um, those are some of the complaints that I hear from, from women who attract consistently unavailable men. Oh yeah, absolutely. I mean, we've all been there. I know I certainly have. If you guys, everyone watching live, there are 72 people watching live already. Um, just wanted to say hi to everyone really quick. By the way, every time I look at my phone, I'm just reading the uh, reading the comments. I forgot to tell you before we started. Um, so hi to Jani, uh, Flordella, Haiti, Vanessa, Margo, Brenda. Yes, Vanessa says, yes, he is hot and cold. That happens all the time. Yeah, another yep. sign of emotionally unavailable man, right? Yes, hot and cold. I'm available. What are you doing tonight? Oh, tomorrow? No, I'm not free. I'm not free for the next week. <laughs> totally. Yeah. yeah. You know, he comes on really strong. And then once it gets too close, it's like too much intimacy and closeness for him. And then he'll start to back off and, and mm -hmm. drift away is what I found, right? Yeah, absolutely. And and to be to be honest, women, women can show up at this pattern as well. And we don't always recognize it. But like I, I know, for example, like I, I was one of the women that was unavailable and not really showing up for my relationship. So it does go both ways. Um, but obviously, we're we're speaking to the majority of women today, so we'll we'll speak into the unavailable man and um, and and that experience. Yeah, I'm so glad. I was just you totally wrote my mind. I was just gonna say, you know, oh, we can do this too. By the way, especially if we're not really like all that into a guy, but we like the attention. He's mm -hmm. nice. So we can be kind of like slippery, right? Like, and <laughs> men do this too, kind of hard to get a hold of, hard to like pin down for, for a day and time to get together. Um, thank you guys so much for all the comments. Takesha says, I keep attracting unavailable men. What can I do about it? Um, this is perfect. So let's, let's jump right in. What is, what are some things you have women do, or do you start with like the inner work? I'd love to hear your process. Like, let's say I was um, your client and I had this problem where I was attracting emotionally unavailable men. What's the first thing you would have me do? Yeah, absolutely. So I work with my clients in sort of like a three tiered system where they're, I like to call them heart tunings. And we absolutely start from the inside out. And the first tuning that we look at is, um, is, is tuning our, our, our attitude, our attitude about love. So one of the very first things that I would be doing with a client is looking at our own belief system about love, our own attitudes about love, relationships, about men, about ourselves, what we think we deserve, what we what we want. Um, because a lot of times, you know, and it, it might be like kind of a funny way to look at it because it's like, well, the, the problem is with him. I'm attracting the unavailable man. But if we look at it as, okay, well, you've been attracting a series of unavailable men, then the common denominator 
is actually you. So we look at what's really going on behind the scenes. What's what are how are we in some way creating this reality? How are we um, manifesting these unavailable men into our lives through the way that we think about love, the way that we think about what we deserve in love, what we think that we can or can't have in love? And a lot of times there's a lot there's there's a lot of like either conscious or subconscious story there that we're not even awake and aware to. So, you know, a powerful move would be to be partnering up with a coach or doing some doing some research, some reading around what are some common beliefs or common limiting beliefs around love. And even like if you're already past that step, then doing a whole brain dump of what are your beliefs around love, around relationships. Because even if we know what we want, even if we know in our head that what we're capable of attracting, there's still there's still things that are underlying the surface that are sabotaging those efforts. And that might be the, the quiet fear-based voice that pops up in the middle of the night or the, you know, that says that we can't have what we want. Or again, that quiet fear-based voice that pops into our head when we're at the gym and we see an attractive man, but we we don't make eye contact or don't like connect with him because we don't feel like we are enough. We don't feel like we're attractive enough to catch his attention or hold his attention or 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 maybe we have a story about good looking men and we just you know so really examining our our beliefs not only about love about relationships about men about ourselves that would be a foundational place to start and and that's kind of helping us tune our attitude about love it's so important you know because you can do everything that we say to do or what what I say to do in some of my videos like oh you know lean back get into your feminine energy but unless you're really kind of taking a look at your beliefs or, or what's causing you to either attract or stay attached to, you know, an emotionally unavailable man. It's, you can't, you know, it's almost just like sticking a bandaid on a huge totally. wound, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I say using, putting a bandaid on what, what actually calls for open heart surgery. <laughs> oh, that's perfect. I love that so much. Oh my gosh. I'm going to use that. <laughs> totally. <laughs> yeah. So, so yeah, I know a lot of women kind of say things like, well, I refuse to believe that there's something in me that's actually attracting this. You know, something I say though, you know, if you're still there, if you're still feeling strongly attached and, and not able to let go of a man or move on from an emotionally unavailable man, I always say there's something to take a look at. Right. Absolutely. And that actually leads me to sort of the second pillar that I work at in my, in my, your majesty coaching programs, which is uh, tuning our personal energy. So the first, sort of the first element that we look at is tuning our attitude about love. And then we look at tuning our personal energy. Like how are we showing up? Are we showing up as desperate and needy and clingy and, you know, and don't get me wrong, like we're humans, we have needs, but at the same time, if you're consistently prioritizing your man and his needs above what you need, what you want, and who you are, then you're whittling away what makes you attractive to men in the very first place is your authentic being. So, you know, I, and I see this a lot. I see, you know, women who maybe maybe they get to like this really radiant mag magnetic place but then once they attract a man in then the fear sets in like oh now i have to i have to shape shift i have to fit the mold in order to be what he wants me to be in order to maintain his attention to keep this attraction to keep this relationship going and when we do that like i said before we're we're literally exiling the parts of ourselves that attracted him to us in the first place so we're we're dimming our light, we're making ourselves small because maybe we think that we're too much. Maybe we think that he can't handle us or in our full expression of emotions or in our full creativity. But the truth is, like I said before, those are the things that, that make us attractive to high quality men. So when we, when we can see what a, <laughs> like I really wanna swear, but I'm not going to, when we can see what a BFD we are, which stands for a big flipping deal, um, and hold ourselves in this queenly place this queenly place of, and I tell this to my clients all the time, I want you to write this down. I am the treasure. I am the prize. When we hold this in mind and we, we, we put ourselves in that, that treasure kind of state of mind, then it's harder for us to um, shape shift and people please our way into relationship and, and therefore like attract these unavailable men. Because if you're, if you're holding strong in your power, in your BFD-ness, in your queenliness, in your personal majesty, then <laughs> like if, if, if a man is not able to connect or if, if he's not able to 
hold space for that or handle that, then he's just simply not your guy and you get to move on. And this is, this is kind of the tricky part because you know, we, we, we will get attached. You know, it's, it's, it's very often that we start to develop feelings and, and want more from a man who clearly isn't able to offer us more. Uh, I want to kind of just make a little, <laughs> a little detour here because if we are in relationship and we're finding that our emotional needs are not being met and we're suspecting that our man is un emotionally unavailable, then that relationship at least deserves a conversation. So it's not just like, well, I'm going to get on my white horse and I'm going to be my personal queen and, and like, you can't give me what I want, so I'm out of here. <laughs> but it's more like if you're in the relationship, then, you know, for example, uh, years ago before I met my husband, I was in a relationship with what I call my Mr. 80%. He's this guy and we love Mr. 80%. We love it, love everything about him. We get along great. You know, there's great chemistry, synergy. But the, that 20% that's missing is typically one of our non-negotiables, like something that means so much to us. In my case, it was commitment. But I really had feelings for this guy. So instead of just jumping ship, which was my, my historic MO, I expressed to him vulnerably that I was starting to develop feelings for him. And I was curious, I was, was wanting to see where what was possible with our relationship, what was possible for the two of us. And he gave me a straight up answer. Like he was in the middle of a program and he like a, a, a higher education program and he was spending more time in the, whatever his story was, he didn't have time and it wasn't a priority to him. And here's the thing, ladies, like when a man tells you something like that, you, we have to listen to him and trust that he's telling the truth. And sure, I got pissed off, but like a couple of days later, once I cooled off, I recognized that he's telling me the truth. And what a gift, what a blessing that was. Because then I could start to feel into, all right, am I, am I going to continue down this path with somebody who's clearly telling me that there's really no future for us? Or am I going to release him with blessing knowing what a BFD I am, what a queen I am, and like step in and, and trusting that I can have what I want. Because after a while, like once we are coming from that place of power and that place of self-worth, then it's only a matter of time before a man does step in who truly is in pursuit energy, who's like moving mountains to spend time with you, who's wa wanting to prioritize you, time with you, your well-being. Um, and I've seen it over and over again. I love everything you said so much. I can't wait to just like dissect all of it. Everyone's loving that. I'm the treasure. I am the prize. That was phenomenal. I, I really like, it's just so important because when we find that Mr. 80% for the 120 people watching live, have you ever found that Mr. 80%? That is like the most brilliant way to put it, you know, um, <laughs> Because the the twenty percent is actually something that's really big, like the commitment, or right. Um, those men, it's so easy to put them on a pedestal, and you might have ten other guys chasing you who are available, but it's like we want this one guy that we can't quite. He's like just slightly out of reach, right? He's just slightly at arm's length. He, it's yeah. great, the chemistry is great, the physical attraction's there, and we get these like rare feelings for him. And then when he says something like, I'm just not available, you know, or I can't give you what you want, you deserve better, all those things that those kind of guys say, we look, we try to look for evidence that he doesn't really mean that, right? Like, well, he, right. Says he loves me. And so he says he loves me. That's what we focus on. It's so important to like, believe him, right? Believe right. what he's saying. And that can be the hardest thing, right? Especially if we don't feel that way about very many men, right? Right, right, exactly. But he, but he keeps, but he keeps wanting to know what I'm doing. So he keeps asking me out Saturday. He keeps inviting me over on Saturday nights. It's like, okay, well, there's a reason for that, you know. In fact, even when we had the release conversation, you know, he was saying, well, you know, we could still get together, and and I'm like, no, actually, we can't, you know. And this is the other thing is that we. We will often have a breakup, but then still stay emotionally or physically entangled with these men because it feels good. Because like we were saying before, it's like, it's like putting a Band-Aid on what really is calling for open heart surgery. It feels good. It's a dopamine hit. It's like all of your neuro neurotransmitters, your feel good chemicals are, are firing off. So we don't have to sit in that loneliness, that longing, that desire for that 360 full picture of love that we actually really crave. 
So wow. it's like this stopgap. But what 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 happens when we're entertaining the men that we already know is not our guy is that it's kicking the can down the road for the love that is lasting, outrageous lifetime partnership. Oh my gosh! I everyone to just rewind <laughs> that minute or two and just watch it a hundred times. I know I'm going to. That was like one of the most powerful things. I've heard somebody say on this topic that is so huge. Oh my gosh, that it can because it can't it can be addicting. It's like a it's like a yeah. drug. I haven't been there. I was this was the type of man I certainly used to be attracted to and attract the emotionally unavailable. There's something so like uh, intoxicating or even addicting about that because it was a part of myself that was deeply emotionally unavailable, like so afraid of commitment and true intimacy. So, so that's where we both felt safe. So that's when the chemistry can be off the charts. And then we place meaning on that and we say things like, oh, well, he's my soulmate and we're meant to be together when, when he's clearly as clearly as he possibly can showing you all the signs that, that he, you know, isn't available for what he wants. Someone had a great question. Um, let's see. What do you tell someone when we realize they're not emotionally available? Um, any any thoughts on that? I mean, it depends on the situation. If you're um, if you're just in the early stages, you might not even you know if he drifts away. But a lot of times, yeah. these men come back around and try to keep like a foothold in your life, right? Right, right. Yeah, and I definitely I, I agree with you, Helena. That it it really depends on the situation. Like if you are if you're just dating somebody and it's it's just a few dates and you're getting getting the sense that this this person is really shut down, this person has got 20 other priorities other than love, then there may not necessarily ha have to be a conversation directly about his availability or not. Because if you are consistently being let down, if consistently your needs are not being met, then the conversation simply just has to be like, I, um, this, isn't, this isn't working out for me and I, I really appreciate meeting you and I really hope you find what you're looking for. Like simple as that. Now, if you're in a relationship, um, it, it gets, it's, a, it's a little bit different because if you are wanting to hold on to the relationship, because here's the thing, it is possible for uh, someone who is not emotionally available to eventually open up and connect, it's like especially within the context of a relationship that they, they deeply uh, value. So, because here's the thing, like, and, and this is kind of, it's, it's a little tricky. Not every emotionally available man is like wanting to be out of the relationship or, or just because he's unavail um, emotionally unavailable doesn't necessarily mean that he doesn't crave intimacy or connection. It's just that maybe, maybe that's never been taught to him or maybe that's a reflection of his early childhood programming. So that's, and, and in that case, those are, um, you know, conversations around what your personal firsthand experience is, right? We want to keep it in a, in a first person experience because anytime we're pointing the finger or saying like, you're not giving me what I need, then it's very easy for that to turn into conflict because we're pointing fingers and we're telling what the other person is or isn't doing. And then they're going to be like, well, what do you know? You don't know anything about me. And it just creates more divide. However, when you can summon the courage to be vulnerable and express to your partner what you're experiencing, like, I'm lonely in this relationship. I'm experiencing distance. I'm, I'm feeling sad because I, I want more from you. I want more of you. I want more time with you. I want more connection with you. I'm feeling, oh, it just, it, it makes me feel distant. You know, when we can come from that place, that's, that's actually a connecting conversation. And if your partner really values the relationship, then he might, well, if he values the relationship, then he will hear you and he'll lean in and he'll ask you questions or he'll offer solutions or brainstorm with you, but it, it'll become like a, a team, a team, uh, what, am I, what am I trying to say? I'm like a, a team mission to create more intimacy and connection in the relationship. Now, if the man doesn't value the relationship, if he has, like I said, 20 other priorities that are higher than the relationship or higher than you, or if he's if he's deeply wounded or like so shut down that he can't even hear you, then you'll know right away because he'll get defensive or he'll gaslight you, telling you that you're not experiencing what you're feeling, or like, how can you say that? Like that's not that's not what we've got, you know? Um, or or it, you know, like there's like 10 other ways that that it could it could show up that this is a clear sign that he doesn't value the relationship. So those are some examples. Again, like I said, it's a little tricky because without knowing what kind of scenario you're in, like there's it's a little bit like choose your own adventure. Like 
you're single, if you're partnered with a man who values the relationship, if you're, you know, or, or do you value the relationship? I mean, obviously, like if you have emotional connection and you desire to be spending time with him, then yes, you, you value the relationship. So then the relationship therefore deserves that kind of conversation. I totally agree. Yes. Yeah, someone asked earlier in the chat, you know, or they just commented, they've been living with a man who's emotionally unavailable for, I think she said 23 years. So hopefully that was helpful. Gave that were some, you know, wow. amazing things to say. And I love what you said that the point of that is just to see what he does with that information, right? Is yeah. you want to work on things or not. And if he doesn't, you know, maybe that's your answer right there. So that was really powerful. Yes, thank you for that. Um, someone else asked, what do you say to someone who's not emotionally available, who is a close old time friend? Friendship turned passion. He's not seeing the future as a romantic partner, yet we're close friends. Yeah, I wouldn't hold out hope for a man like that. Bex, what do you think? No, I'm I'm of the camp that like when a man want, when a man identifies what he wants, like there's nothing that will stop him to, to um, to harness that, to, to go after that. Um, I, the clients that I work with, we're, we're always on alert for men and pursuit energy. And if, you know, and, and here's the thing, like this is not the end all be all, but the, the truth is, is that women who are, women that I work with who are driven, ambitious, successful, go-getters, type A, we tend to be the pursuers. And what that often attracts are, um, more feminine energy men. And I'm not saying that there's absolutely, there's nothing wrong with that at all. Like I have a very good girlfriend who's in that kind of dynamic relationship and they have a blast. She runs the show and, like, and he does what she says and it's beautiful. It's great. Now that, that just, just like that said, most of the women that, that, that I work with, and I think you do too, Helena are, are of the camp that they want to be that way in their in their professional life. However, in their relationship, they want more of a balanced dynamic. They want to be able to give and receive. They want to be able to lean back and be in their feminine. Um, I forgot what the original question was. <laughs> Could you remind me? Yeah, oh yeah, I was just gonna say that. Sorry, sometimes when my guests are talking, I do weird things like drink coffee out of a straw and hope <laughs> okay. the camera doesn't switch back to me. Um, so um, yeah, I was gonna say <laughs> that. Um, uh, it was, you can't have it both ways, right? A lot of women, they are that exactly your, your typical client, Bex, they're strong, ambitious, amazing, like kicking ass in the world, like phenomenal things. And, uh, they want to, they have the tendency to run the show in their relationship, but also actually what they want is a man who really cherishes her feelings and values her feelings and can take charge sometimes. So you often can't have it both ways, right? If you want a masculine energy partner, you have to, a lot of the times, learn how to get in touch with this other, with this other side. So, um, yeah, no, you, you answered that question. That was great. Um, someone says, let's see, the friendship is important. Can we go back to friendship? I mean, it depends on the situation. Uh, Bex, what would you say there was, um, there was uh, like, I think it was a friendship turned passionate. He doesn't, doesn't sound like he's ready for the kind of relationship she wants. Um, I would say if it's, if that's preventing you from truly opening up to men who are really actually available, if it's blocking your relating to men who are available, you might want to let it go. I mean, Bex, what would you say about that? I would give it some space. Yeah, for mm -hmm. sure. I, what I'm hearing is that there's a friendship dynamic. She's, she's hot for him, but he's not, or he's like more interested in maintaining their friendship. So yeah, in, in that scenario, um, I mean, there's like, I want to, I want to like, if, if this woman and I were working together, I mean, there, there would be, uh, <laughs> there would be the thought, the invitation to take some space, but in that space, I'd have a series of questions that she asks herself. Like she asks of herself, like, what are the qualities about this man that have her so uh, lit up about him? Because chances are, and, and this is what I know for sure is that we we fall in love with like qualities and personalities. But the truth is, is that there are six, seven billion people on this planet. And so that one person is not going to be the only person that represents these qualities. So when we can really get in touch with what this man represents in her life versus like who he is as a person and like what they have together, 
when she can kind of just take like a couple of degrees of separation and really examine like, what is it that I love and appreciate about this man? What is it that I love and appreciate about myself when I'm around him? And then we can start to ask the question, okay, and then how would I wish my future beloved to show up differently? Because the truth is, I mean, this friendship dynamic is kind of like an 80% relationship where, you know, the friendship, sure, totally fine, good as friends, but she's not getting pursued. She's not getting romantic interest. She's not receiving, um, she's, she's not receiving him or well, he is not, um, we're live. This is what happens on live video. <laughs> we think about what I'm saying. Um, well, yeah, like he's, he's, he's just not there. And so when we're in that situation, whether it be a friend or a Mr. 80%, we really have to ask ourselves, like, am I honoring myself and my full picture of desire by longing for this man? And, you know, and I understand, like, it is difficult to just, you know, snap our fingers and cut feelings off. And that's not what I'm asking her to do. But it, it really comes back to this relationship with self. Am I honoring myself and my vision of 360 degree full picture love by longing for this man who I know I can't have? And even if it's I can't have him today, like, what am I doing to honor my vision of 360 degree love. Like one of the one of the phrases that I offer my clients, and I want you ladies to write this down too, is I love myself more than that. I love myself more than that. You know, when I was when I was breaking up with my Mr. 80%, one of the things that came to my my cognition, my my reality was I am better off on my own than in a relationship wishing that it were something different. You know, because we can and and for the my heart goes out to the woman who's been living with an unavailable, emotionally unavailable man for 23 years. You know, that is, that's a really long time to invest in a relationship where your needs are not being met, you know? And so then that begs the question, do you love yourself more than that? Do you, um, you know, are you, are, would you be better off on your own than in a relationship wishing it were something different? I know being on our own, especially if we've been in a relationship for a really long time, it can be a scary flipping leap. I really want to swear. Um, I like, I don't know. I'm not, why I'm not. I think it's because it's live and it's YouTube. I don't know. But um, <laughs> you can swear. It's totally fine. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, it's just, you know, we're, we're, I forgot what I was going with that. I got, got, got all caught up with looking good and not swearing, but um, yeah, it's, it's it, like I said, okay. Leaving, leaving long-term relationship with an emotionally unavailable man can be, can be scary. Absolutely. However, like you're a creative being, you're a human that has like creative capacities to, to figure things out. You have community, you have connection. You can figure it out. Like you, you can absolutely figure it out. You can lean on your people and, and, and work it out. I mean, I, I was coaching another client kind of through the same thing. He had a, an engagement breaking up and, you know, and he didn't have a place to live and he's just terrified. And I'm like, dude, you, you have, you have climbed mountains, you've jumped off bridges, you can fucking figure it out. Like, and it's gonna be okay. Like, things are always working out. Things are always working out. They may not feel good, but if we can have that mentality that things are always working out, then we can always be looking for, how is this working out in my favor, even though it doesn't feel good? I went off on like seven crazy tangents there. I feel like. No, I no, I just love everything you said. It, yeah, so often what happens is um, the woman, you know, detaches herself emotionally or, or yeah. energetically from this emotionally unavailable type of man, and then looks back and goes, "Oh my gosh, it's the best thing that that could have ever happened." But when you're in it and you're feeling rejected and your ego is crushed and you're trying to just like hang on to whatever you can, it's it's yeah. gonna be hard to see that. But I, what I love about what you said, it's like zooming out and getting this bigger view. I love that you call it like a 360 degree view of your life. Um, Cause it can be easy to like zoom in on these guys and focus so hard on them and just try to pull out of them whatever that 20% that, that you're not getting. So that was right. very powerful. Thank you for that. Um, let's see, uh, someone asked the difference between uh, emotionally help us identify the difference between narcissistic men and emotionally unavailable men. Do you have anything on that? Anything uh, the very that? first thing that comes to mind is like um, the rhombus and square, like uh, a square is always a rhombus, but a rhombus is not always a square. And I know this is a weird analogy, but stay with me. So um, a narcissist 
is always emotionally unavailable. However, an emotionally unavailable man is not always a narcissist. So what I mean by that is that someone who has narcissistic tendencies or like bona fide narcissistic personality disorder, because they are two different things. And if you don't know, then you should Google it and look it up. Um, but the, that, those, those, those folks are going to be emotionally unavailable no matter what. And they're, um, yeah, going to be prioritizing themselves and their needs and their feelings and their stories and their communication, everything above what you have to say. Now, they might be connected. They might have um, a connection with you, but it's, it's all about them <laughs> versus an emotionally unavailable man who is not necessarily a narcissist tendencies or narcissistic personality disorder is just less likely to open up, less likely to share his experience, um, less likely to share his feelings, um, less likely to be vulnerable with you. So it, it, it's, 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 inter it's interesting because it's, for me, the way they show up is like almost like opposite ends of the same spectrum where someone with a narcissistic personality disorder or narcissistic tendencies is going to be possibly potentially like very connected and very talkative and very up in your up in your grill but again like i said always about them versus we swing the pendulum to the opposite side and someone who's emotionally unavailable is not yeah just not not connecting in in the ways that you're desiring not sharing their world with you not bringing you in um like an example, I had a, a client who got out of a relationship uh, that she was with with a guy for about a year and a half. And she had introduced him to his parents, or her, her parents introduced him to her friends, brought him to dinner parties, and like was really bringing him into her world. But in a year and a half, she never met his parents. She never met a single one of his friends. She didn't know hardly anything about his day-to-day -day life in his in his career you know so i mean that's that's the kind of behavior that somebody who's emotionally involved it's, it's a little bit of an extreme but that's an example yeah i can totally feel the difference the way you explain that that's it's so interesting where you said a narcissist is is pretty much always emotionally unavailable but just because someone's emotionally unavailable doesn't mean that they're narcissistic yeah i totally agree someone else asked a good question does an emotionally unavailable man want to connect on a deeper level but is too afraid to or doesn't know how or they intention or do they intentionally want to hurt the other person it's hard to not take it personally yeah i would say that it's it's often not intentional and they, they often really do care and, and they're not trying to hurt you Bex, what, what's your take on that yeah i agree with you helena it's often more often than not unintentional and more based on insecurity and fear of getting it wrong or insecurity of uh, pleasing you or making you happy or, oh, yeah, I mean, it's, or, or whatever childhood programming that a, the man is bringing to a table of like, you know, constantly being criticized by his mother and, and maybe that, that caused him to shut down in that department. So it's, it's not often that he's trying to be malicious or trying to cause harm. And yes, girlfriend, it is so hard not to take it personally. And this is where your personal majesty and your own self-care practices, self-love and compassion practices, self-awareness, self-reflection, all of those things are so vital because what, what tends to happen is we, we experience the emotionally unavailable man and he's not trying to do this on purpose, but then we react. And then when we react because we're taking it personally, then we get caught up in this downward shitstorm of a downward spiral. And then it's just like conflict city. So um, what, what she mentioned, the woman who asked the question about take, it's hard not to take it personally, she is spot on. That is absolutely true. It is hard not to take it personally. However, it is our responsibility to, to recognize what's happening within ourselves and to either communicate it or to work through it on our own or you know whatever whatever that answer is but if we want to create more intimacy then reaction is like the last like just not not the way to go
Yeah, I yeah, I totally agree. Yeah, great questions coming in. Uh, Sandra asked, do they ever come around? <laughs> Such a great question. Uh, my experience, I am very familiar with this type of man. This is my experience and what I see in my clients. Typically, when you, you know, take your focus off of them, you start working on yourself, getting in touch with what you truly want, and you zoom out a little bit, right? You kind of stop that laser focus. Um, maybe you stop initiating contact. You stop trying to get together with him. You start dating other men. Yes, this type of man usually comes back around, but then what typically happens, unless he's done some kind of deep internal work on himself, he sort of uh, hits a wall in terms of what he's capable of, right? Mm -hmm. the, the minute you have like a hint of expectations about a potential relationship or, or something, or you get too close, Typically, this kind of man, all of a sudden, his fears, his his unreadiness, basically like where he's at will come rushing back and he's just the same uh, unavailable guy he always was. Now, of course, every situation is different. That is what I've seen very, very often. Uh, Bex, what, what would you say with this question? Do they ever come around? Yeah, that's that's a, another tricky one. Uh, I think the waters run deep on that, Helena. I, I love how you described it. I, I definitely see that happening in uh, clients' lives. Um, you know, in the case of my Mr. 80%, I, I didn't stick around long enough to find out <laughs> because I knew there was just this knowing with ever, every fiber of my being that I was worth more than somebody who just wanted to hook up on Saturdays and like go out for laughs. And I just, I knew that I wanted more and I knew that I, I, I was, I knew that I wanted more and I was worth more. And I had zero evidence that it was available to me. I had zero evidence that it was possible, but I just, I leaned into that knowing, that trust, and and I, and, and, then, and I let go of the vision. I let go of it and I went, like you were describing, Helena, deep into myself, deep into my passions, deep into my creativity, and started like changing the world in my, my little pocket of the world at that time. And sure enough, extraordinary love showed up at well, showed up in my inbox, but um, so yeah. I mean, I, I think it could go both ways, but you know, if if you've had the conversations, if you've spoken about your experience, your feelings, your needs, what what you need from the relationship, what you're hoping to create with this person, and you're still not getting those met, then I wouldn't stick around. <laughs> that's that's just me. I totally, I mean, I obviously completely agree with that. Yeah, totally brilliant. Um, there's a question from, let's see, Rose. This is this question kind of came up over and over again, this theme of, like, he states he doesn't want marriage, he's emotionally unavailable, but he also won't go away. She huh. says his behavior screams that he wants to have his cake and eat it too, but he is actually faithful. Um, what, what would you say to a woman who, you know, the guy hangs around, right? Like I said, he kind of keeps that foothold in your life. Uh -huh. He doesn't want to commit to being with you, but he doesn't want to commit to, like, letting you go and not being with you too. Yeah. Right? What yeah. would you say for a woman who has an emotionally unavailable man who kind of keeps coming back around? I would say capital B boundaries <laughs> because there's something like it's a two way street. There's something, you know, he, he keeps showing up at the door, but who keeps opening it, <laughs> you know? So, and this, this goes back to that, that band aid feeling of like, Oh, well, when we spend time together, it feels so good. Like I love the attention. I love the physicality. I love being held in his arms. What I don't love is like the entire week or the entire month that we don't get to see each other or he doesn't answer my calls or he doesn't, you know, so we women have a responsibility to recognize when the needs are not being met to create some boundaries and then skillfully uphold them, you know, so it's not just like falling back into this gravitational hole of the warmth of his arms or his embrace and it feels good, I know, but again, coming back to, I love myself more than that. And honestly, like it might take some courageous conversations where you gotta like really lay it out for the guy if you've already done that. It might take some extreme measures like blocking him. It doesn't, you know, like it, blocking him on social media, blocking him on your phone, changing your locks. I mean, they might sound like super extreme measures, but if he's not going away, if he's not respecting your requests and your wishes, then he is crossing a boundary. And the only way to really get that boundary locked and loaded and like expressed and to like let it land in him that you were no longer open for shop, open, open shop for, for play, for fun, for physicality, for sex is to literally shut it down. And it's hard, girl. 
I know it's hard, but that's again, and, and I keep on talking about this obviously because Helena and I are both coaches, but this is where having a mentor or a guide or somebody in your corner is super helpful because they're not like Helena or somebody like I, we're not gonna let you fall back down that slippery slope of what just feels good in the moment, sacrificing what you truly desire in relationship. Oh my gosh, yeah, this is like resonating so much with everybody, yeah. Um, yes, Bridget says, thank you, I'll set boundaries. Uh, if he comes around, thank you. Sandra says, that happened recently, I decided to go silent on him, I'm struggling with it. It is hard, Rose says, yes, it really is. It's almost like, um, you know, the it's like a roller coaster. The highs are so incredible that it keeps you going through the lows, right? Mm. Like, it, it's like the highs are so good. Those, you know, the 20% of the time when things are great, that keeps you going through the rest, like you said, the rest of the week when you don't really hear from him or he's like hot and cold, right? It can be the hardest thing. So yeah. that was a great answer. Thank you for that. Um, what are some, before we close out, what are some, like, I don't know, maybe give us your top two or three tips for, you know, um, either dealing with someone who's emotionally unavailable or detaching yourself. I mean, what, what are like some of your top tips for women in this situation? Absolutely. Prioritize number one. Who's number one? You are. You're number one, you're number one, and you're number one. <laughs> so prioritizing yourself, engaging in soul nourishing behaviors, behaviors that light you up, fill your cup, make your heart sing. Like let your world expand beyond this man. Like we were talking earlier about like we can get so laser focused on, on this guy and this relationship and what he's what he's giving you, what he's not giving you. Like let your world expand. I mean, in my situation, um, I went deep into creativity and, and what was nourishing my soul at the time. And I and 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 I created something like I I, I embarked on a mission. I was like so hooked on this mission of like like being involved in something bigger than me, you know, and like hooking into something that would expand me and grow me that had nothing to do with men, nothing to do with relationships or dating. So first and foremost, prioritize yourself and then give yourself a mission to expand yourself beyond love and relationships. Now, here's the thing, it's all interconnected. So as you expand, as you grow, as you push your own personal boundaries in creativity or your career or your own health or your relationship with spirit, God, source, manifestation, like you are, you're creating the foundation. You are stepping into your personal majesty, which is what makes you radiant and magnetic to high quality men. So when you are so like loved up on yourself and your cup is so full that it's overflowing with awesomeness, like you're not even gonna have to work really hard to find a man. He's just, he's literally going to see you for who you are and he's gonna say, hot damn, I want some of that. And then he's gonna, and, and, and then you get to experience pursuit energy. You know, I've seen this time and time again with my clients. I have experienced this in my own life. And seriously, it is, it, 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 it's almost, it's, it's very paradoxical because like as much as we want this high quality, outrageous, lasting love, as much as we want that, we have to love ourselves and nourish ourselves more than that. And kind of like hold this vision for outrageous, lasting love with this open hand so that source, God, magic, universe has space and ability to work its magic on you. So that when, she, when it shows up, it's like, oh my God, I had no idea it could be this amazing, this is like, this blows what I had in my imagination out of the water. I had no idea. Like, I, I swear, like, like I said, I've seen it time and time again. And so to detach, just to sum up, to detach, just bring it back home, bring it back to you. And, you know, and, and one, of the, one of the ways that I work with my clients is kind of looking at like who we were when we were five, six, seven. You know, when we're, when we're children, up until about seven or eight, we live in this theta state where where everything is sort of like fantasy. There's really no distinction between reality and fantasy play. So when we're in that, that young age, we're so free to be our authentic self, to be just radically, unapologetically ourselves. And so we start looking back at like who we were at those ages. What did we love? What lit us up? And we start to incorporate some of those activities, some of those behaviors, some of those ways of being into who we are today. And, and that helps us get in touch with what I call your personal majesty, the, the radiance, the magnetism that attracts high quality love. 
That is so beautiful. Thank you for that. I love that idea of expanding your world, right? I call it like zooming out and getting a bigger view to where you're not so laser focused and, and your, your self-worth and self-esteem isn't hinging on what this man is doing or not doing. You know, sometimes it can be, um, our tendency can be to kind of like seek validation or, or if a man is not able to connect with you emotionally or commit, we, we take it to mean something about our own value, right? So I can mm -hmm. see how expanding your world, zooming out, everything we've been talking about would, you know, your value does not decrease based on a man's inability to see it or connect or commit to you. So that was, that was beautiful. Uh, let's see what everyone is saying. Um, uh, Sandra says, wow, well, I'm on the right track. Good advice. Bridget says, I'm glad I know I'm on the right track. Tiffany says, overflowing with awesomeness. Uh, <laughs> yes, thank you. Detaching. Uh, beautiful. Thank you, ladies. I'm the treasure. I am the prize. Um, okay, this is great. I'm so glad this is resonating with everyone. There's about 150 people watching live now. So this is fantastic, Bex. Thank you so much. Before we close out, let's, let's talk a little bit. I know you have two free gifts for everyone, they're in the description right now. So everyone watching can, can go check those out. Let's hear about those. Yeah, sure. So the first one is a three-part video series. It's called uh, Soulmate Love Awaits You Just As You Are. So you don't have to go change who you are or change up your whole life to attract the love that you want. And it's a series of six mindful practices that help us open up to love. And you can find that at bexburtoncoaching.com. And then the second, gift is a little bit more of an extended video series. It's the top 10 energy leaks that sabotage us from attracting lasting love. And these are conscious and subconscious behaviors that we engage in all the time that either leak our energy or create disconnecting energy. And actually, like I said before, kick the can down the road of attracting the love that we really desire. And you can find that on bexburton.com forward slash 10 energy leaks, 10 with a number 10. And those, Helene is gonna link up for you down here in the description so you can find them, they're free. And um, the 10 videos, you'll get one email a day. The videos are about four or five minutes long. They're easy to digest and you'll be shocked at like how many of these energy leaks you might be engaging in now or at any time in the past. And as always, I love hearing from the people who are tuning into my stuff. So if you grab one of those free gifts, please, please reach out and let me know what's landing for you, what you see yourself in, um, because I love hearing from the people who are tuning in. Amazing, yes, oh my gosh, everyone go check those out. They're there right now, so if you're watching us right now, you can just go click, get the, they're both free, totally free, and Bex has some amazing like free trainings, her newsletters are phenomenal, I always read them, and I know you, you just do so many amazing things. Um, you're welcome, everyone saying thank you ladies, totally thank golden you. advice. Uh, how often do you do these lives? I have a couple more coming up on Friday, so I have one next Friday, the Friday after that, and then so for the next three Fridays, um, you can come here. I also do them all the time on my channel. Bex, I would love to do a live stream with you over on my channel if you if you want sometime soon. That love that. Great. I love your advice is just so amazing. Someone's asking if you do training for men. Bex, do you work with men? Very special men, yes. <laughs> but majority of the work that I do is with uh, driven, ambitious women. And then I do bring in very, very elite men who are absolutely ready to get serious about attracting love. Yes, I do speak with them and, and work with them too. Okay, yeah, yeah. And for everyone asking if, um, oh, Matt's watching too. Hello, Matt. <laughs> Matt from Commitment Connection. He was just texting me. I think he just realized I'm doing a live stream on our channel. So. <laughs> awesome. I always love it. I always love it when he watches. Um, yeah, so if you are subscribed to our channel and hit the little bell, for everyone asking how often we do these live streams, hit the bell notification and then you'll get notified, I'm pretty sure, if we're live. Um, I'm pretty sure that's how it works. And um, the upcoming ones are all scheduled. So if you just go to our channel, you'll see for the next three Fridays, I have them coming up there at different times. So just, just check our check the home section of our channel to get those. So this was awesome, Bex. Thank you so much again. You are so brilliant. Like I don't I don't think that very often about very many experts. Like I love, love, love talking to you so much. I hope we can do this again soon. And everyone watching, I would say watch this video again. There's so much information in it. I think you'll digest it totally differently. And I just want everything you said, Bex, to like penetrate like the subconscious minds of everyone watching about how to and not just stick the band-aid on something that needs like open heart surgery. That was one of the most powerful things I've heard really anyone say on this topic. So thank you so much again. And then uh, hopefully we can talk soon. Yeah, my pleasure. Thank you so much for having me and everybody. 
Absolutely. Listen again and reach out to either one of us for, for more support.